So I'm here today with Kylie Chan and Ian Irvine at the Brisbane November Supernova. Now, Kylie, how many times today have people asked you, when's your next book coming out? A grand total of 10. I've done really well today. Although some people know that everybody comes up and asks me when the next book is coming out. So they've actually tried to avoid the question and say, so when is the next book going to be finished? And Ian, I understand that you have a book that you're launching at Supernova. What's this book about? Uh, this book's ca called Vengeance. And basically it's a book about um, a world that uh, has been totally tainted by the way it was colonised 2,000 years ago. And That sounds really familiar. Does it? <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's because that's what my book's about. And um, the people who were brutally d dispossessed of sort of <clears throat> are now coming back to get their revenge. Or, and the title's, is, book's title is Vengeance. And you have a background as an environmental scientist. Would you have a um, very strong feelings about the state of our um, environment right now? I wasn't thinking about that specifically in writing this book. In writing this book, I was really thinking more about the nature of political power and and uh, for instance we've seen the example in Australia over the last year or so how uh, Julia Gillard's government and her prime ministership is tainted by the way um, she t uh, gained the prime ministership from Kevin Rudd and we saw the same thing with Nixon and Watergate and so forth. It's a familiar theme in history and it's something that I wanted to explore a little bit in this book, although I emphasise this is a fantasy book which has got absolutely nothing to do with our world or Australian politics or anything like that. This is one of the things that fantasy writers can do. They can uh, disguise what they're talking about by creating an invented world. Now Kylie, I understand that when you were in London recently, you visited the Doctor Who exhibition. I did. I had a lovely time. My daughter grabbed me and took me along unwillingly and then I discovered that there were many Doctor Who exhibits there from the previous series from way back when I was a child and I used to enjoy it. And now I'm going to interview me. Hello Rowena. Now I understand that you have a trilogy out. Yes, this is my trilogy right here. It's a keep you up all night fantasy book and I have people emailing me and complaining because I've kept them up until two o'clock in the morning to finish the books. And and I have, yeah. And I think that's it for me. Anyway, we're here at Supernova in Brisbane with Marianne DiPierre or Marianne Dalacourt, depending on which pseudonym she's writing under. Now, Marianne, your first book was a cyberpunk book. And what possessed you to venture into cyberpunk? Oh, hi, Rowena. Well, I guess, um, you know, I think as a writer you like to keep developing and um, stretching yourself. At least I do. You like a challenge. Everybody likes a challenge. And I wasn't content just to stay writing in one genre for the rest of my life. So, uh, like most writers, I like to write what I like to read and I like to read an awful lot of things. I understand that both your Cyberpunk Parish Places books and your... Sentience of Orion series were nominated for the Aurealis Awards. Yes, I've been uh, the Aurealis Awards are the Australian uh, Science Fiction and Fantasy Awards. They've been going now for about ten years. Um, very uh, happy and I guess privileged to have been shortlisted for pretty much all of my science fiction novels. But it actually took until last year uh, where I actually won uh, best science fiction novel. So that was a really nice feeling. And you have also won the David Award, which is the Crime Award for an Australian female crime writer and you won that for the Tara Sharp books. I understand you've just handed in your third Tara Sharp book? Uh, yeah, that's right. I actually handed it in yesterday before I came to Supernova, which was a good feeling. Stayed up till midnight? <laughs> actually got up at 4.30 in the morning, which was worse, I think. Um, that's been, I'm writing those books under Marianne Delacourt and I was very uh, happy to have kind of got into the Sisters in Crime community in, uh, well, in Australia, but particularly down in Victoria, uh, which was where the award came out of, the David Award, named after Ellen David, who uh, was one Australia's first published crime writer, female crime writer. Um, a great bunch of women and um, a really quite an honour to have 
uh, to have won that award writing a humorous crime novel. Quite an achievement. Now I understand you also have a young adult dark fantasy series out. There's Burn Bright and Angel Arias. Can you tell us a little about this? Um, well, as you know, as we've just discussed the fact that I actually like to write in different genres and uh, all the time I've been writing my science fiction, I had this story I was itching to tell and uh, that story was uh, turned out to be a novel called Burn Bright. So I actually wrote it over about seven years. Uh, it was a bit of a labour of love. I didn't have a contract for it. I just wrote it because it was a story I really wanted to tell. Uh, as it's turned out, um, that novel has came out last year and it's part of a trilogy and really enjoying writing dark fantasy for young adults. I believe you also have a comic strip coming out. You called it your cowpunk story? Yeah, it sounds a bit crazy, doesn't it? I'm writing so many different things. Um, I actually had started writing a novel, uh, which I've, I've always had a great love of westerns, and that was instilled in me by my father uh, from a very young age. And I knew eventually I was going to write a western, but... Of course, uh, with my background, it turned out to be a science fiction western. So um, I started writing this novel last year and kind of ran out of time because I had other commitments. And somehow, during the course of things, it turned into a comic. And that's actually available online from my website. And that's been a great fun, great experience of working with a, um, an Australian uh, illustrator by the name of Bridget Sutherland, who lives in the UK, and um, uh, really had an awful lot of fun doing it. Now this is the Brisbane Supernova, but next year's Supernova will be in Adelaide, Perth, Sydney, Melbourne. Will you be going to all the Supernovas, Marianne? I hope so. Um, Supernova is probably one of my favourite things, well certainly my favourite event of the year, but the fact that it's going to be in Adelaide for the first time and on the Gold Coast, oh, yep. Gold Coast for the first time as well, I'd hate to miss out. So uh, I love the fans, uh, I love the fact that they celebrate the genre and um, oh, I just really would like to be a part of it. And what's the most amazing costume you've seen this weekend? Um, the thing is I don't know who some of them are. There's a man running around with a very lifelike baby on his chest, uh, which is pretty interesting, but I always love to see the poison ivies. Yeah. Thank you very much, Marianne. This has been askbrisbane.com.au.